Are narcissists' brains broken? My name's Ruthann. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm an expert in relationships and issues of narcissism. That means I work with people with narcissistic personality disorder or NPD, people with narcissistic traits, and I also work with their families, partners, and loved ones. Sarah at Cluster B Milkshake recently shared an article from the online magazine Medium, which purported to be looking at the brains of people with NPD. Now, this article cites a number of scientific studies that demonstrate differences in the brain structure and functioning of people with NPD. Now, that's true. There are several studies that demonstrate differences in the brain structure and functioning of people with NPD compared to the general population. But that's where the science stops. The author of this article then goes on to claim that narcissists' brains are broken, that narcissists have no ability to love, and that they are not real humans. She suggests that NPD is a hopeless diagnosis, and that narcissists have no authentic emotions, and that people with NPD are predatory animals and vampire zombies. She suggests that people with NPD can't help it, and that they're to be pitied. Now, while it is true that there are a number of studies that demonstrate neurological differences between people with NPD and the general population, the same is also true of depression, anxiety disorders, trauma survivors, people with post-traumatic stress disorder, and people who've experienced abuse and trauma. There is also ample research demonstrating the concept of neuroplasticity. And that's the idea that our brains continue to evolve and develop throughout our lives in response to experiences. Our brains change when we have new experiences, when we have repeated experiences, when we learn something new. Here's some actual science for you. The brains of London black taxi drivers have much bigger hippocampuses or hippocampi. I'm not sure. But the hippocampus is a region of the brain that's responsible for memory. And that region of the brain is way bigger in the brains of London black taxi drivers. Why is that? Well, because they have to memorize the streets of London in order to keep their jobs. So they have to be able to navigate London without a map. In order to do that, they have to acquire a lot of knowledge. And their brain structure literally changes and adapts as they acquire that level of memory. Research suggests that our brains change in response to physical exercises, mindfulness meditation, self-compassion meditation practices. Our brains change in response to psychotherapy, and they also change in response to psychiatric medications. Our brains change when we reduce the stress in our lives or we nurture healthier relationships. They also change if we're experiencing stress or we are in unhealthy, abusive, and hurtful relationships. And our brains change as we become mentally ill and as we become better. Brain imaging studies are fascinating science, and I hope that in the long term, they will really help us to have a better understanding of different disorders and how best to treat them. However, it is not justifiable to use current brain science research to suggest that anyone's brain is broken or that people with NPD are incapable of change or to make hateful and prejudicial statements that dehumanize people suffering with NPD, which is a serious psychiatric disorder. The broader field of neuroscience actually offers a profoundly hopeful message to anyone who's struggling with long-standing challenges with their emotions or their interpersonal relationships. It is possible to change, to grow, and to develop. There's a whole field of study known as interpersonal neurobiology, which sounds kind of fancy, but it's basically the idea that our brains exist in a social context. As humans, we're not walking brains. We exist in our biology, in our experience of ourselves and our own inner consciousness, our own inner world. And we also exist in a social context. And our biology, our psychology, and our social context all interact and create who we are, and in turn are also created by us. Our biology, psychology, and social context exist in a dynamic relationship with each other. Changes in one can create changes in another. I think the broader field of interpersonal neurobiology and neuroscience supports the idea that we continue to evolve and develop. We can intentionally nurture better self-care, better relationships with ourselves, more self-compassion, better relationships with other people. We can have new experiences, new relationships. 
which can change the way we see ourselves and the ways that we relate to others. And as we do, the chances are we're going to change the neural pathways of our brains. Unlike the author of the Medium article, I don't pity narcissists, and you shouldn't either. I see them as fellow human beings, much like me. If I had been born with that particular genetic temperament and experienced the unmet childhood needs and trauma that that person had experienced, then I too might have narcissistic personality disorder. I also believe that people with NPD, just like other human beings, have the capacity for change, for growth, for development. Now, I don't imagine that this is an easy task. Anyone with a personality disorder is wrestling with a history of serious unmet childhood needs and likely also repeated childhood trauma. That has profound effects on the way that they see themselves and the ways in which they relate to other people and also the way that they exist in their relationships and in their social context. These ways of seeing themselves and relating to others can be rigid, inflexible, forged in trauma, and difficult to change. Change can feel like taking someone to a completely different country, different culture, where they don't speak the language and they don't understand the customs, and expecting them to fit in. And this is no easy task. However, with intentionality, patience, and support, Ideally, from people who are good guides, who have some understanding of both cultures, and who are willing to share in new relational experiences with someone with NPD or another personality disorder, change becomes possible. And that's the difference between pity and compassion. Pity looks down on someone, sees them as less human and less than them. Compassion sees a fellow human being and recognizes their suffering and also recognizes the potential for change. And I want to be clear that this isn't being soft on narcissists. Not at all. I think change is possible. I don't think narcissists are the hapless victims of damaged brains. I do recognize that change is a difficult, slow, and deeply challenging process. However, I also believe it to be possible. And while someone with NPD is in no way to blame for the experiences that they have had that have led them to develop the disorder, I also believe that they have responsibility to do their part in creating better relationship patterns and treating themselves and other people in a different way. Now, it's often said that the only thing people with NPD could do is change their behaviors. I don't believe that. As you change your behavior, but more importantly, as you have new relationship experiences, as you allow other people to empathize with you, as you allow other people in and you intentionally nurture new relationship patterns, it changes the way you see yourself. It can change the way you relate to other people and it may even nurture new pathways in your brain. I think it's time to see narcissistic personality disorder for what it is, a tragic psychiatric condition that's likely treatable, although I acknowledge that right now we're kind of limited in evidence as to how best to treat it. However, there are many good evidence-based principles to draw on from the field of borderline personality disorder that are equally applicable to people with narcissistic personality disorder. And of course, people with NPD also experience many other comorbid conditions, including mood disorders, anxiety, and substance abuse disorders, and we do have good treatments for those. So I do believe that people with narcissistic personality disorder can and should be helped. And I think the wider field of neuroscience presents a hopeful message that brains are not set in stone and that change really is possible. I'd love to know what you think, so leave a comment. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, take good care.